In this video, we are going to talk about probably one of the most controversial subjects that you could get into in programming. And we're going to do this because we need to, before we start developing a lot of different applications, we need to kind of decide on how we're going to do uh, a little bit of the formatting so that everybody's on the same page and everybody's code looks similar. Now, the controversy is related to spaces versus tabs. This would sound like something that's kind of ridiculous, um, and it is, but it harkens back to a day when I think there must have been some legitimate reason for, for having this debate. Um, but I feel like in today's environment with the programming languages that we have and with the ID, the, the, the programming environments that we're using, that it's kind of a, a dumb thing to, to fight about. Now, the, the situation I'm going to explain real quick and then I'm going to show you how to actually fix this in Rust. Um, we're going to be doing most of our programming in Rust. Um, there's a number of reasons, but right now I just want to kind of talk a little bit about this particular subject. Now, here is the way that most people and when I well, this is probably split pretty evenly 50 50 of how people program. But I want to show you real quick the, the method that a lot of people use. So what we're going to do is we are going to just vi a test.rs file and I'm just in my home folder at the moment. And so what I want to do is I want to, and I don't, I don't even know what, what computer I'm on at the moment because I've been SSHing into other devices. But what I want to do is we're just going to uh, do an if statement here. We're going to say if one equals one, and then we're going to come out here and do this. Now, inside of this if statement, I would need to put a number of spaces to indent my my code so what i would want to do is i would want let's say we've decided that we're going to use three spaces so i would hit the space bar three times and then i would put in my code goes here okay now this is literally the way a lot of people program they actually hit the space bar over and over and over to put their spaces in however they want them and the, there's a couple things that I think are wrong with this. First off, we have just, at the front of this code, we have just inserted three spaces. So that's three characters that we've inserted into the code where if I actually hit the tab key, it'd only be one character. Um, and, and it's hard to visualize this because you can't see a space. Um, it's actually a space, but there is a character there to represent what that space is. Now, if I were to open up another line here, let, let's do, in fact, let's just do this. I'm going to copy this if statement. I'm going to paste it here. And this time I'm going to get rid of that code and I'm going to actually press the tab key. Now, some programmers will even go in and change their tab key to insert spaces, the, the whatever number of spaces that they want to insert. And, and so they go in and do that. Now, my biggest issue with this is not that you've inserted three characters instead of one. And again, if I were three tab spaces in, I've inserted nine spaces instead of just one instead of just three. So it gets exponentially bigger depending on how many indentions we go in, in the code. Now, but that's not my main problem with this. My main problem is, is that the programmer that decided to use three spaces has forced me to have to use three spaces everywhere that I work on their code. So I am being forced to view code the same way that everybody or the same way that the original programmer programmed this code. Now, it, that may seem petty, but it's kind of a big deal because some people like four characters, some people like eight characters. And so by you 
picking to insert eight spaces or four spaces or three spaces in, into your code, you have literally dictated how every programmer from that point forward is going to look at your code and be able to work with your code, which means that if I go from somebody's code that was doing four spaces to somebody's code that's doing eight spaces, I have to go into my editor and change the defaults, which we're fixing to go do. I would have to change my defaults to represent whatever characters they decided that they were going to put in the file. Where if we had decided that we were going to use tab spaces or tabs instead, actual hard tabs, we wouldn't have any problem because, and again, I'm going to show you how this works. So what we're going to do real quick is we are going to jump out of this file real quick. And we are going to go into, now I'm on a Linux computer, so I'm going to go into my config and I'm using the uh, NeoVim editor, which is basically VI. Um, and I'm going to VI my init script. And you don't have to understand all this. I'm just kind of showing you how this works. So right now I'm set to three tab stops. That's, that's what my default is. But let's say that I have decided that I really like the way eight, tab stops look i don't really like three it's a little bit too short and over the years i have decided that i like to view eight um, when i'm working with stuff and so we're going to vi this test rs file again you'll notice that just by me making that change in in my editor the code that had spaces inserted into the code is still only showing three spaces because that programmer literally put spaces in here and there's nothing I can do about it. I can't, I can't change the format of his code and tell it I would rather view this as eight. And the primary reason is, is that if I make a change like that, if I reformat the file to make it make the tab spaces look the way I want them, I am literally inserting new characters into the file. And therefore, when somebody goes and tries to look at the changes that I've made, every line in the whole file has been changed. So I, I, we literally are stuck with three spaces if that's what the first, the initial programmer had done. And there's nothing any of us can do about it. Now, you'll notice, though, that on the line of code where I inserted a tab, it's only one character and it represents a tab, which is a backslash T if you're actually inserting it, but it's irrelevant. It is a tab. It's still a, a hidden variable, I mean, a, a hidden uh, text field and or a character. And it represents that there's one tab there, but now I can go into my editor and tell it whatever I want to for viewing that tab. I can change it to whatever I like and view it the way that I like to view it. And I'm not changing the code at all. And no programmer is forced to view the file in the same way that the original programmer did, because we can all have our own view of that file and we're not mucking up the file for the original programmer or for anybody, because every single person that opens up that file is going to view it the exact same way. So the first thing that you need to have, in my opinion, when we set up our Rust program, because here's the thing, the Go language is another language that Google, the, the Google designed the Go language. Go, when they set it up, they set it up for hard tabs. So every single file has hard tabs in it and it's all the same. So when you do a Go format, it, it replaces any spaces that you put in there with tabs. And so the Golang language has defaulted that way. But Rust, when they defaulted theirs, they decided that they were going to use spaces. They're going to use four spaces. So if you are running a Rust compiler or a, a Rust editor, chances are the plugin for that editor is going to force you to use four spaces. Even if you set your editor to view as tabs or to view eight spaces instead of four, the, the, the Rust formatter, the cargo format, is going to replace that with eight spaces. And so we need a way to work around that. We don't want to have it do that. And unlike Go, Rust actually has a pretty powerful uh, compile or a format engine that lets you override some of the defaults. And that's what we're going to actually do now so that you can make sure that all your projects are set up the same way. Now, what I'm going to do first is I am going to go back into the config file for uh, NeoVim 
and we're going to VI this init file because one of the things that you have to do is, let me find it here, uh, right, is this it? Nope. Um, I'm trying to remember, oh, right here. So the let GRUS recommend, and obviously this only works with Vim, but if you're using a different editor, you can probably figure out a way to do it over there as well. But we're basically telling it that, that the Rust recommended style, we're going to set that to zero, which means don't do it. I want to have my editor decide how the formatting is going to go on that file, not the Rust format. Uh, control. So that's the first thing that we have to do. Now, the other thing that I've done down here is I've set, and I'm going to set this back. Um, we're going to set this because I actually like three spaces. Um, so we're going to set this back to the way it was. Um, you'll also notice that I do not have expand tab on. I have smart indent, um, auto indent, copy indent, ink uh, search and smart case, but though the, the smart indent and auto indent are in addition to my tabs up here so that I get all of the stuff that I'm wanting. I, I want my editor and my tab key to work like a normal tab key. Now, I'm going to save that. And now the next thing I want to do is we're going to go into our Rust source folder. And I'm just going to go into one of these uh, files. Now, when you create, when you use Cargo Create to create your, or Cargo New to create your uh, project, one of the things that happens is you get a cargo.toml file that you have defaults in it, what libraries you're going to use, all that kind of stuff. And we'll get into that as we go along. But the, the other thing that we want to do is we want to actually create a file here called Rust. I'm trying to, I, I think it's rust-format.toml. And we'll check that in just a second. Um, but we're going to insert a line here that says hard underscore tabs equals true. So we're telling it that we want to use hard tabs. Now, what that does is if we CD into the source folder and we take a look, we've got our main file. And right now you can see that we have the, the compiler has used spaces here, not tabs. And I know that because when I go left and right, I'm literally moving one character at a time. So what let's take a look if I type cargo format. Uh, I'm not on the right computer. Um, so anyway, when I do a cargo format, it'll actually go in and replace those spaces with tabs. So it actually fixes the problem. Um, so that is what we're going to be doing with mo most of our, with all of our Rust projects, because we, we really feel strongly here that tab keys are what you ought to be using because then everybody can view the source code in the way they want and they're not forced to do anything that they may not want to do.